Megan, is it true? Uh, what's all this I'm hearing about you stopping your IVF treatment? Rodney just told me. Hey, Betty, how have you been? Yep, the IVF thing is exactly like Rodney told you. We've decided to stop having the treatment. Why? You've been having treatment ever since you got married. Why would you want to give up after all this time? Do you not want children? We've been having treatment for years now, but we haven't made an inch of progress. All it's doing is draining us physically, mentally, and financially. It doesn't come cheap, and we just decided it wasn't worth the toll it was taking on us. Which is why, after a lengthy discussion, we decided to stop. But believe me, Betty, this isn't a decision that we took lightly, and it hasn't been easy for either of us. All that may be so, but still... Do you realize that if you stop now, you might never get another chance? You're both already in your late thirties. The clock's ticking, Megan. You can't get pregnant forever. It might be difficult now, but it'll be downright impossible if you leave it too long. How do you think you'll feel then, knowing if you carried on with the treatment, there might have been a chance? I know that. Trust me, Betty, we've already been over everything you're saying more times than you know. But we decided this is for the best. Well, I won't go along with it. I simply will not. If you don't have kids, my son will be the last generation of this family. Are you trying to exterminate my bloodline? Exterminate your bloodline? Jesus, Betty, where the hell did that come from? I didn't have a toothbrush mustache the last time I checked. But being serious, we plan on looking into other alternatives. Having kids yourself isn't the only way, you know? There's always adoption or fostering. No, 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 no! That's simply no good. It's a wife's job to bear children. Look, Betty, I understand how you feel. You're my mom-in-law and you want grandkids. I get it. I really do. And it's not like we didn't try. We tried so hard, but... My body seems totally unwilling to work with us and there's only so much stress we can take. I'm begging you, please, will you try to understand? This isn't easy for us either, you know? No way, it's too early to give up. At least carry on with the treatment for another year. But we've been doing it for years and years by this point. We can't take any more. A year's worth of treatment is expensive. To be honest with you, it just feels like we are throwing our money down the drain. We want to start putting it to better use on other things. Other things, such as? Well, for starters, if we do end up adopting or fostering, it's going to cost us a lot, so we'd like to put most of the money towards that. Just wait a second. How could you be so selfish? I can't believe what I'm hearing. Why does this conversation seem to be going forward on the assumption that you have my approval to adopt? Let me make one thing crystal clear, Missy. You do not. How can you even call yourself a woman if you're incapable of having children? I'd appreciate it if you didn't say stuff like that. I can still become a mother without having kids of my own. Besides, you speak as if a woman's only value is her womb. I, I don't mean to be rude, but this isn't the Bronze Age. Don't get cheeky with me, young lady. I'm airing a legitimate grievance with your irresponsible decision, and you will take me seriously. You should know that I'll no longer acknowledge you as my daughter-in-law if you go through with this. If you can't have kids, there's no reason to keep you around. And we don't need you in this house for a second longer. Divorce my son immediately. Wow, are you joking? We're not getting a divorce. Why would we do that? Because you decided not to have children, why wouldn't you divorce? Step aside gracefully so someone more capable can take your place. My son should be married to a woman who can bear children, not a barren wasteland like you. You're damaged goods. And you're more horrible than I thought. Me and Rodney love each other whether we can have kids or not. Me and him agreed to stop the IVF treatment together. Knowing my Rodney, he's probably just pretending to go along with it because he's kind. Deep down, he wants kids more than anything. It must be so difficult for him to hide his disappointment with you, my poor son. You probably make him feel awkward about talking about how he really feels or like he'll get shouted at if he tells the truth. 
How could you make him tolerate such an awful situation? You're the worst wife of all time. Did Rodney say that to you? He didn't, did he? He's not pretending to go along with anything. How about you stop dictating at me about how you think things must be based on your own warped assumptions about the world and accept what I'm telling you at face value? How dare you speak to me like that, you insolent little upstart? I'm your husband's mother. I know my son better than anyone else in the world. We are not getting a divorce and that's final. This is mine and Rodney's problem, so whether it's the kids or the treatment that may or may not enable us to have kids, it's for me and Rodney to decide on our own. Rodney told me you and him had a little chat last night. Yes, we spoke. What of it? Do you understand now? Because you were vehemently opposed to the idea of us stopping treatment when I told you yesterday. Rodney told me you both made your decision after a lengthy discussion. Right, and he made it clear it was his decision as much as it was mine, didn't he? He didn't say that. He also told me he has no intention of divorcing you. Okay, so do you finally accept it now? There's no doubt about it. We're broken up about the fact that we won't be able to have kids of our own. But having kids isn't everything to us. Just because we can't have children doesn't mean that we're going to divorce. We mean more to each other than that. And there's more to life than just having kids. Don't worry, Megan. I understand perfectly. You've got my son wrapped around your little finger and he's no longer capable of independent thought. Excuse me? wrapped around my little finger what's that supposed to mean you know i couldn't get my head around it when you told me it just didn't make any sense what man in their right mind would be okay with his wife not being able to give him children that's simply not how the world works when you get down to brass tacks the ultimate purpose of a married couple is to produce children why do you think marriage exists in the first place Maybe in your world, but not everyone thinks like that. Least of all, me and Rodney. This isn't my world. This is common sense, you cheeky little madam. Common sense? Common among you and your friends from the bingo hall, maybe. Sure, there are a lot of older folk who still think that way, but it's 2023 now and the world is changing. You're wrong if you think that's how most people think. I mean... Come on, Betty, there are tons of couples out there who've been together decades with no kids. It's pretty obvious that not everyone agrees with your worldview. You're wrong. I've never seen anyone be this wrong about something before. It's embarrassing. Would you please just calm down? Rodney himself just explained the situation to you. He told you this is what he wants. What more can we even say to you at this point? You've brainwashed him with your devious wiles. That's the only possible explanation for him speaking such nonsense. It has to be. It has to be. Ugh, you still don't get it. I could forgive you being misunderstood before he set you straight, but I can't give you the benefit of the doubt anymore. This is beyond ridiculous. Just accept what we're telling you and let's be done with this fiasco already. You shut your insolent mouth. My son would never agree to something like that if he's had his head screwed on properly. He's been brainwashed. I should never have agreed to let you marry him. I have to save my son from your evil clutches. By that, I take it you mean you want to cause him a bunch of unnecessary stress by trying to convince him to divorce me? Do you have any idea how upset he'll be if you carry on acting like such an obstinate blockhead? We've been through enough lately, Betty. The last thing we need is you bothering us with your absurd demands. You've got some nerve to claim to care about my Rodney being upset. When you've manipulated him into being your subservient little yes-man. You may as well have his manhood in a jar, that poor boy. I'm trying to save him from your clutches here. Wow, it's patently obvious this conversation is pointless. I may as well be talking to a brick wall. Actually, no, that would be an insult to brick walls. I've heard all I need to hear. 
You have no intention of listening to what either of us have to say. Fine, forget it. We don't need your understanding or acceptance. Who do you think you are? Don't be so selfish. What makes you think you call the shots here anyway? I won't let you get away with what you're doing. You've got another thing coming if you think this is the end of this, madam. If you're just going to keep talking at me while ignoring everything I say, then what's the point in us even talking at all? This is a waste of everyone's time. We're done talking to you. If you really care about Rodney, you'll accept that the best thing for us to do right now is to keep as much distance from you as possible. What are you talking about? Distance? Are you threatening me? I'm not threatening you. We're just making the only decision you've left us with. We're going to be keeping our distance from you for the time being, or at least until you demonstrate to us that there's any value in talking to you. Rodney and I always knew we might have to do this one day. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. We knew that if you couldn't understand and accept our decision, we'd have no choice but to keep a healthy distance from you to preserve our sanity. What? Oh my god! So let me get this straight. Not only do you attempt to exterminate my bloodline by refusing to provide me with grandchildren, but now you're trying to snatch my own son away from me? You horrify me. Is there anything you're not capable of? You can think what you like of me. It's not my problem anymore. Who the hell do you think you are? You've gotten so big for your boots, you think you can steal my own son from me? You've got another thing coming if you think you're getting away with this, Missy. Hello, Megan. I heard someone attacked you and you got seriously injured? I hate to say I told you so, but this must be the universe's way of telling you to change your ways. Karma's a bitch, huh? I see you heard the news. Yes, I got attacked near the house. Whoever it was had some kind of baseball bat. How terrifying! There are some real lunatics on the streets these days. Did anything get stolen? Yes, they took my purse. Ah, so it was a robbery then. But why on earth did they have to hurt you if all they wanted was your money? How barbaric. I can't believe this kind of thing would happen in our neighborhood. It never used to be like this around here. The world's going to the dogs, I tell you. Right. You see it on the news all the time, but you never think it's going to happen to you. Well, how are your injuries? The doctors tell me they'll take three months to heal. My legs are fine other than a few grazes from when I hit the ground, so thankfully I can still walk. But there's a big crack in my left wrist bone. I see. Well, it could always be worse, I suppose. You should be grateful you can walk, my dear. Life on crutches would have been a nightmare. Sure, I'm grateful it's not worse, but having a broken wrist isn't exactly fun, you know. I'm left-handed, so I can't even do simple things like cooking my own food or getting dressed on my own anymore. I'm so sorry to hear that, dear. How awful. You poor thing. This couldn't have happened to a lovelier person. I hope they catch the guy who did it soon. Thanks for your kind words, Betty, but you don't need to worry one bit. They'll be arresting my attacker any minute now. Wait, what? They're going to arrest him? Uh, you mean they already know who did it? But I thought you said you didn't get a good look at his face. No, I didn't. But I know where she lives. Not long now, I'm outside my attacker's house with the cops as we speak. Huh? Now? Where are you? Like I just told you, outside my attacker's house. The kind of deranged lunatic who'd attack someone with a bat as they walked home needs to be taken off the streets and thrown in jail immediately. Wouldn't you agree? Um, well, yes, of course I agree. Uh, but do they really know who did it? Uh, how? They found a clue. A clue? What kind of clue? Surveillance cameras? Witnesses? What's wrong, Betty? You're asking an awful lot of questions all of a sudden. You seem agitated. Is there something bothering you? Something you'd like to share, maybe? I'm not ag agitated. I'm just curious about who did it is all. 
It's only natural I'd be worried if there was some lunatic roaming around the neighborhood with a bat, I might be in danger. They couldn't figure out who it was from the surveillance cam footage. They were crafty enough to wear a hood, and they took a route with no cameras when they escaped. The cops said it was either the fluke of a lifetime, or it was someone with a pretty intimate knowledge of our neighborhood. They say they think it was a planned attack, but my purse that got stolen turned out to be the ultimate clue. Your purse? I totally forgot about this, but Rodney reminded me after we got done with my x-rays and getting patched up by the nurses at the hospital. I have a loss prevention tag in my purse. A loss prevention tag? What's that? It's like a GPS kind of thing. I bought a couple, actually. I have one clipped to the inside of my purse and another in my phone case. I can activate it with this little button on my key ring as well as with an app on my phone. I'm so forgetful. I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed on. Rodney got me a bunch of them for Christmas a few years back. They're so handy. I can't tell you how many times they've saved my butt. Wait, do you mean you figured out where your attacker lives using this tracking device? Bingo! We were able to pinpoint exactly where she lives. Isn't modern technology amazing? That's why you don't need to worry yourself one bit. My attacker will be in jail before you know it. And the neighborhood will be safe once more. Wait a sec. You wouldn't happen to be worried for a different reason, would you? Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you'd be in trouble if my attacker got caught or something crazy like that. Betty, are you there? How long do you plan on holing yourself up in the house? I really think you should come out soon. You need to do something about the cops surrounding the place before I think about setting foot out there. There will be a big ruckus if I come out, and that's the last thing either I or the neighbors need. Are you blind? There's already a big ruckus. Look at all the patrol cars. The neighbors are already out in droves. Haven't you seen the crowds? Everyone's wondering why there are so many cops outside your house. But don't worry. If you come out, things will calm down right away and everyone can get back to their normal lives. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't be taken away by the cops in front of the entire neighborhood. There's a limit to how much embarrassment one person can take. But these lovely policemen would really, really like to have a chat with you, Betty. They're here to arrest you, after all, because you're a violent criminal. What? Who's a violent criminal? You, obviously. Me? Violent? I don't have a violent bone in my body, and I resent the accusation. I am your mother-in-law, young lady. Don't be so rude. But, Betty, you came at me from behind with a baseball bat and beat the crap out of me before I even had a chance to figure out what was going on. If that's not violent, then what is? We can go with barbaric or savage instead if you like. The bottom line is that you broke the law and my wrist, and you're going to face the consequences. Lies! There's no guarantee that this GPS tag of yours is accurate. Technology malfunctions all the time. Give me definitive proof or stop making these hurtful accusations at once. You're upsetting me. Definitive proof? Okay, you asked for it. Huh? I just had a look through the garden shed. Guess what I found? The bat you used to beat me black and blue with. What would an old lady living on her own need a baseball bat for? It seems suspicious if you ask me. I think we should have the forensic guys test it out. That's, um, uh, Rodney's old bat from back in the day. I came across it when I was cleaning out the shed last week. The only reason I left it leaning against the wall like that was because I was getting ready to throw it out. Really? Cool story, Betty. Want to know something else weird? There's this dark red stuff all over it. It's my blood, isn't it? Um... I think this just about covers our definitive proof, don't you? So what's it gonna be? Something tells me the cops' patience is gonna run out if you keep insisting on keeping yourself holed up in there for much longer. I'm no criminal! I haven't done anything that warrants me being arrested! So that's what you're sticking to, huh?
I see. You just broke the tag, didn't you? Do you not realize it's a little too late? There's nothing you can do to escape the hell that's about to come down on you. I at least thought you'd be intelligent enough to know when to give up, but I was obviously wrong. Are you calling me stupid? How dare you? Forgive me. I accidentally said what I really think of you. Do not make fun of me, young lady. This is not a joke. Your life is one big joke. How can I not make fun of you? Not liking me doesn't give you the right to use violence to beat me into submission with a baseball bat. These aren't the actions of someone with a brain, Betty. Aside from being wrong on every level, it was completely moronic and borderline psychopathic. You don't get to act like a cave-dwelling savage and not face the consequences. All I wanted to do was take back my son after you stole him from me, you heartless little witch. I was a mother in pain. Was what I did really so wrong? Anyone would have done what I did in my position. You needed to learn a lesson, so I taught you one. So you did this for Rodney? Something tells me he didn't want you to beat the crap out of his wife. He couldn't be more furious with you. In fact, I've never seen him this mad. Wait, what? Is Rodney here too? Yes, he's talking to the police at the moment. He told them to do whatever it takes to arrest you, even if that means using force. You've got another thing coming if you think he's going to defend you. He wants you in the back of one of these cop cars more than anyone. He said you need to pay the price for what you did. No, this can't be happening. My son would never say that. Oh, by the way, there's something I forgot to tell you. A few days ago, me and Rodney decided we're going to adopt. We've been making phone calls to all the local orphanages. It looks like we're going to be able to have our family after all. This is all your fault for not being able to have children. None of this would be happening if you didn't have a barren wasteland for a womb. If you didn't tell me all that nonsense about adopting or fostering, I never would have had to buy that baseball bat. You might not be blood related, but any children we adopt would have been your grandkids. But we don't have any intention of letting you meet them now. Far from it, we're not even going to tell them you exist. I can't think of a single benefit of them knowing about someone as horrible and black-hearted as you. We're washing our hands of you. No matter what happens to you from here on out, it's not our problem. We'll never be there for you again. Not now, not ever. You mean you're hanging me out to dry? I wouldn't put it that way. I'd say it's more like we're having a tumor removed. Anyway, this wasn't my idea. It was Rodney's. There's no way he'd ever say that. Uh, stop lying to me, Megan. You're sick. I'm guessing you stole my purse to make it look like a robbery. You probably thought you were really clever by covering your tracks like that, didn't you? I bet you didn't think it'd come back to bite you in the ass this hard. It's time to come out of the house and face the music. You shut your mouth. This is all your fault. All your fault, I tell you. You'll pay for this. You wouldn't believe some of the rumors going around the neighborhood about you, Betty. You really are the talk of the town. I doubt you're going to have any allies left when you get out of prison. I hope you're good at being on your own, because something tells me you're going to have a very lonely, isolated future ahead of you. You deserve every second of it, of course. Oh my god, how could you do this to me? I'm the victim in all of this! You stole my son! You called me an evil witch. But judging from some of the conversations I'm hearing out here, the public consensus is that you're the evil one. Rodney and I don't want anything more to do with you. We are so done. You said I was damaged goods, but from where I'm standing, the only damaged one here is you. And I mean that on a deep, psychological level. We'd have to be insane to carry on letting you play a part in our lives. See ya! Not long after that, Betty, accepting her fate, appeared on the doorstep and was quickly taken away in the back of a cop car in front of the entire neighborhood. She was given a hard time after a very speedy trial. It was an open and shut case due to my blood being all over the baseball bat I found in her shed. 
The only visitor she got was a single reporter from a local newspaper who wanted to do a piece on the whole affair. True to form, she desperately tried to defend herself and play the victim during the interview. Knowing her, she was probably arrogant enough to believe she could convince the reporter and the world of her innocence. However, when the article eventually came out, it made her look about as bad as it possibly could have. The piece, titled Baseball Bat-Wielding Maniac Mother-in-Law from Hell, ripped her to shreds and portrayed her accurately as the deranged lunatic she is. Her futile attempts at asserting her innocence only made her look worse in the end. Once she was in jail, Rodney and I moved out of state somewhere she could never find us and adopted our first child. Her name is Clara, and she's the most adorable little girl you'll ever meet. It's a shame we couldn't have kids of our own. But every cloud has a silver lining, and it's precisely because we couldn't have our own children that we were blessed enough to meet her and have her in our lives. The workings of fate are mysterious and inexplicable. And even though it hasn't been plain sailing, me and Rodney feel nothing but grateful for what life has given us. Hey, Kirky! You're on your lunch break now, right? How are you doing today? You're not feeling under the weather or anything, are you? Huh? How did you know that I'm not feeling so good? I got this excruciating pain in my stomach. Not only that, but banging headache, too. Ugh, I knew it. I thought your face looked a little off-color when you left for work this morning. I've been really worried something might be wrong with you. Did I really look that rough? You can be really perceptive sometimes, Phoebe. I'm especially surprised you noticed since I felt more or less normal when I left work. Oh, it's nothing, really. I don't even have to look at you to know when something's off. I come from a long line of pharmacists, you know. My family have been dealing with the sick and unwell for eons. I kind of have this instinct for when people aren't at their best. Actually, I guess my stomach started feeling a little funny after breakfast while I was still at the house. I didn't feel bad, per se. I would have never imagined I'd end up like this. I see. Is it really that bad? How are you feeling now? You said your stomach's in excruciating pain. Are you okay, sweetie? I'll be honest, I'm not doing great. This pain in my gut's been getting worse ever since I arrived at the office. I've had to run off to the toilet five times already. I'm like an active volcano. I'm not going to be able to get work done at this rate. I've got the most explosive diarrhea you could imagine. Wow, that sounds awful. Are you sure you should be at work in this state? I don't know if I'll even be physically able to continue if it carries on. I've been in a cold sweat since I got here. I wonder if I caught some kind of cold or stomach bug. Hmm, I heard from one of the girls that there's a stomach bug going around at the minute. Ah, I know! Maybe you caught it when we went to my folks' place the other day. My mom told me Dad fell ill not too long after we left. Does he have a stomach bug too? Yeah, he went to the doctor and they told him it was infectious gastroenteritis. Have you vomited at all? As things stand, no. But... I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel something coming on. Aw, oh, man, is this gonna get even worse? If it's the same thing my dad has, probably. He had all the same symptoms as you, except he was throwing up, too. How's he doing now? Did he recover? I haven't heard, but him and my mom are both pharmacists, so they should know a thing or two about how to deal with a bug like this. He's probably fine. Uh, I guess they do know their stuff. I hope he's okay. Anyway, forget my dad. You need to focus on looking after yourself right now. Mom said you have to drink extra fluids to replace the ones you lose with the constant trips to the toilet so you don't dehydrate. Plus, remember, it's infectious. You should wear a mask, especially while you're at work, and wash your hands regularly. It could spread to your coworkers if you stay there. Damn it, you're right. And that's the last thing I want. If it's really the same thing my dad had, it's definitely infectious. It wouldn't be that surprising if your coworkers started coming down with stuff. I think it's for the best that you tell the boss how you're feeling and come home ASAP. Can you do that? Hmm. Maybe I should come home. Don't like I have that much to do today anyway. It'd be a nightmare for spread to everyone. Most of the folks in my department have families and kids. If I'm not careful, we can have a pandemic of loose bowels on our hands. 
Hopefully you can get home soon. Drive safe, sweetie. If you need to stop off to use the toilet at a service station, don't hesitate. It'd be such a shame if our car seats got... stained. Okay, leave it with me. I want to stop by at the docks first. Mine's still open. Wait, what? You're going to the doctor's? Yeah, of course. I want to get confirmation on what it is and take whatever drugs I need to get rid of it as soon as I can. I'll have peace of mind that way. Okay, I see. Make sure you tell the doc that you were near someone with infectious gastroenteritis recently. They'll be able to see you faster that way. Good idea. Thanks. You've been a big help, Phoebe. Pleased to be of help, sweetie. I don't know anything about medical treatment myself. But you said it yourself. Your family's been in medicine since the dinosaur times. I bet you know a damn sight more than I do. I'm no expert. Sure, my family's been in medicine for a long time, but they were mostly just pharmacists. The only doctor was my grandpa. Oh yeah? That reminds me, how are you doing? You could come down with something too. Any symptoms? I'm fine, sweetie. What about Trent? Anything out of ordinary with him? He has his high school finals coming up soon. Chronic diarrhea is the last thing he needs on his plate. Apparently my dad was the only one at my folks' place who came down with anything. My mom and little brother were fine. Seems like just because you're in close contact with one of the infected doesn't necessarily mean you'll come down with it. The infected? Get <laughs> it out, I'm not a zombie. Anyway, I'm pleased to hear it. I'd feel awful for Trent if he came down with it and had to postpone his exams. Yeah, it would be a shame. He'd be super disappointed. He's been studying so hard to fulfill his dream of becoming a doctor. Mom said he went into panic mode and holed himself up in his bedroom with a weak supply of food like some doomsday prepper when he found out my dad got ill. Wow, he's really taking his exam seriously. I respect that. Still, let your mom and bro know that they need to be extra careful now it seems like I have it too. Pass my best wishes on to your dad as well. Thanks, Kirk. But really, you don't have to worry about my family. They'll be fine. You should be focusing on yourself. You might not think stomach bugs are that dangerous since most people recover on their own in a few days, but there are cases when people get hospitalized. Good morning, Kirky. Did you have breakfast yet? No food till noon. Doctor's orders. Oh, are you still fasting? Yeah. You would not believe how hungry I am right now. At least you have your appetite. That can only be a good thing. I bet you can't wait for lunchtime. I would be, but he said I'm only allowed to eat plain oatmeal, but I doubt I'll enjoy it that much. You should just be grateful you still have your appetite, sweetie. How are you feeling today? A little better, actually, but the diarrhea and vomiting still haven't stopped. Oh, still not great then. I guess if it was bad enough that you had to be admitted to the hospital, it's not the kind of thing that would get better overnight. No kidding. I never really underestimated this thing. I never expected it to feel so bad all of a sudden when I got to the doctors. I can only thank my lucky stars I made it there in time for them to help me. I shudder to think what might have happened if I'd been driving. I couldn't believe it when they said I needed to be admitted to the hospital. They said you were severely dehydrated, right? Yeah, that's right. They said they'll be able to discharge me the day after tomorrow at the earliest. What? The day after tomorrow? Isn't that too early? Is that really enough time for you to get better? Yeah, at least that's what the doctor said. Really? That just seems lazy. I can't help but feeling he's not treating this with the gravity it deserves. Are you really going to be better by then? I'm sure it's still not much of a big deal, don't worry. I might still be visiting the crapper at regular 30 minute intervals, but I feel a heck of a lot better in myself compared to yesterday. I've got a feeling the doctor's right, and I'll be better in a couple of days if I just keep resting up and taking it easy. Really? Your symptoms must be a lot milder than I expected. This mild? You kidding? It feels pretty heavy from where I'm laying. Gastroenteritis is not to be messed with. But I guess it can't be anything too serious if they think you'll be ready for discharge in a couple of days. 
I was terrified when I heard you'd collapsed at the doctor's surgery. I thought it must be as bad as it gets. You almost sound disappointed. Even if my symptoms are on the mild end, I'm still not having a great time here, you know. Oh, don't be silly. Of course I'm relieved you're getting better, sweetie. Hey, morning, Kurt. What's up, Trent? It's great to hear from you. A long time no see. How long have it been now? You're too long. Sorry about that. I've been crazy busy with my exam prep lately. Oh, and sorry to bug you at this hour. Were you asleep? Nope, I'm very much awake. I'm finding it hard to get a good night's sleep in the hospital bed. All this exam business has got you up real early, huh? What's up? You're getting discharged from the hospital soon, right? Yeah, they said tomorrow at the earliest. I'm about to have some bloods done. If everything comes back all right, I should get the all clear to go home. I see. Why do you want to know what day I get out of the hospital? Oh, I know. You're planning on throwing me a celebration party, right? You shouldn't have, Trent. You're the best. No, Kirk, it's not that. This is serious. It's after you get out of the hospital. Do not come back home. You won't get off with just a few days in the hospital next time. What did you just say? What does that even mean? Are you going to elaborate? Kirk, I think they're trying to kill you. You need to escape somewhere, anywhere. Just get away. What the hell? Who might be trying to kill me? Escape? What are you saying? Your stomach bug? I don't think you caught it off my dad. I think they just made it look that way. Who the heck would want to kill me? What is this, some kind of mafia movie? I'm just a freaking office worker. I sit in a cubicle by day and watch TV with my wife by night. Who am I, Tony Montana? There's someone who would have a lot to gain if he died. A lot to gain? Who? How? You're not making any sense. Trent, are you taking drugs? Look, I know it's common for students to take things to help them study these days, but it can be very dangerous. They can make you hallucinate. Trent, are you taking something? No, Kirk. I don't even drink coffee or crying out loud. This is serious. Just answer me this. Who would get the insurance payout if you died? Who's the only person who has access to your food and drink? Who's the only person who would be willing to slip in you something and making you ill if they, if they so desired? Whoa, whoa, you stop right there. You are not seriously accusing Phoebe of putting me in the hospital by poisoning my Rice Krispies, are you? No way, she'd never do that. Never, ever. You should talk about your big sister with more respect, Trent. I didn't think you were like this. The only reason you're saying that is because you don't know what my sister's actually like. Now I'm telling you, my sister and parents are conspiring to hurt you and take your money. I think they're trying to kill you. This isn't a joke and it isn't a prank. Why would I be telling you this, Kirk? Think about it. I've never been more serious about anything in my life. It's not that I don't trust you, but this is, this is just too nuts, dude. I'm finding it a little difficult to take in. Me and Phoebe have been getting along great lately. Besides, even if we weren't, I, I doubt she'd have it in her to do anything like that. But I overheard them. With Phoebe and my parents. I overheard them discussing their plan. Their plan? To slip something into your food. My mom and dad run a pharmacy, so they have access to all kinds of drugs. I overheard them talking about it. I heard everything they were discussing which drug... I heard everything. They were discussing which drug to use so you wouldn't taste anything. To inflict enough damage to do the job. Wait, seriously? Yes, yeah, seriously. That's why I think you should disappear somewhere far away as quickly as you possibly can. I totally get that you find it difficult to take in, believe me. I thought I was hearing things when I overheard them. I know it sounds nuts, but I swear, it's God's honest truth. You really think I joke about something like this? No, I don't. Oh my God. I can't believe Phoebe and your parents would do something like that. It seems as, it seemed like it was my parents' idea. They were giving my sister instructions and advice on what to do and how to get away with it without being found out. She's their pawn. They plan on splitting the insurance payout when you're gone. Are they really that desperate for money? I seriously can't believe this. You might not know this, but my mom and dad are in a lot of debt. The family pharmacy hasn't been doing so well over recent years. I think that's the motive. Huh? It hasn't, but last I heard, it was thriving. Sure, five years back maybe? Things were doing great until the big general hospital nearby re relocated as part of an expansion project. The pharmacy was in the red within the same month, and 
Things haven't been the same ever since. To add insult to injury, the new drugstore got built near the station not long after. There was no coming back after that, but they were too proud to accept that it was over. Instead of doing the sensible thing and shutting up shop for good, they went into debt to prop it up artificially. The only customers they would get the, the only customers they get these days are a couple of old regulars who live in the neighborhood. Whoa. I had no idea. You know how they say money changes people, right? Well, it's true, Kirk. I found it hard to believe my family could be involved in something this horrific. I still don't want to accept it, but... God. I heard it with my own ears. Trent. I knew it was real the moment I heard you'd been taken to the hospital. There's no telling what they might do next. You have to get away. I doubt you get off this lightly a second time. It's now or never. Hmm, you're right. But even if I do disappear somewhere, what about you? Surely they'll figure out you told me. It could be your life in danger next. They can all go to prison for all I care. No, let me rephrase that. They should go to prison. You can't just try to kill someone and get away with it. I told you this being fully aware of the implications. You're right. If what you're saying is true, we have to tell the police. But Trent, what would become of your future if the whole family got if your whole family got arrested? You'll be taking your final before long. What about your dream of becoming a doctor? I always knew how kind you were, Kirk. To think that even with my family conspiring to kill you, your priority is not ruining my future. I can't believe they try to hurt you. Now, I'll never forgive them for this. Please, don't hold back on my account. Even still, the thought of you ruining your future over this, I can't, Trent. I just can't. You're still so young. You have so many hopes, so many dreams, so many ambitions. It's fine, really. You wouldn't be destroying my future at all. I'll still be able to fulfill my dreams, so don't worry about me, okay? I'll go stay with my grandparents when my family get arrested. My grandpa and grandma are good people. They never condone what's going on. They'll let me live with them, I'm sure of it. Besides, when I heard mom and dad were up to their ears in debt, I decided to go to college on a scholarship instead of letting them pay for it. So I'm not as dependent on them as you might think. I see you thought this through. I guess in that case, there's nothing stopping me from doing what needs to be done. Exactly. So don't worry about me. Focus on making your escape. My deranged parents and sister are probably already planning their next move as we speak. They won't let you get off so lightly again. Got it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep my discharge a secret from Phoebe. Then I'm going to leave the hospital without her knowing and... Hmm. I wonder if I should go lay low at my parents' place. You'll have to go back home to get your things first, right? You let me know when you're getting discharged as soon as you find out. I'll create a distraction by inviting my sister over to, by inviting our sister over to our place. That way, there'll be no chance of you running into her while you go home. Got it. Thank you, Trent. I'm so sorry to burden you with all this. My sister came over to our place as soon as you got admitted to the hospital. I'm guessing my mom and dad gave her some stronger drugs to finish the job with. You should have a look around your house while she's there. Maybe you can find something incriminating. You know, like the drugs themselves or something. Or some things you might be able to use against them in court. Good idea. Alright, I will. Are you really sure you're safe, Trent? If we go ahead with this, there's no going back. They'll probably figure out it was me who ratted them out as soon as they realize you're gone. But I'm safe for now at least. Can we meet up once I get out of the hospital? The cops need to know what's going on. I'd feel a lot better if you went and told them together. Plus it'd make our crazy sounding store more convincing. You're right. Okay, let's report them together. Alright, well I think that just about covers everything. Let me know as soon as you, fi as soon as you find out when you're getting discharged. Hey, Kirk, sweetie. How are you feeling? I've been so worried about you since I heard the doctors extended your stay. I went to see my parents today, so I'm going to stop by at the hospital to see how you're doing and drop off a few things. Let me know if there's anything you want. It's fine. I'm already out. Huh? You're already out? What does that mean? I got discharged yesterday afternoon. What? But you told me they extended your stay yesterday. What are you talking about? I lied. The truth is, I got discharged yesterday. I'm not at the hospital anymore. Why would you lie? And why haven't you been home? What are you doing? And where? I won't be revealing that. I lied about them delaying my discharge to give me time to escape from you. What? Why would you need to escape from me? Why wouldn't I need to escape from you? You're trying to kill me. Wait. What? 
What the hell are you talking about? Did you hit your head? Did they mess up your medication at the hospital or something? Huh, seems like your guts aren't the only things malfunctioning, because this is just plain crazy talk. This hospital stay of mine was all the result of your botch plan to get rid of me, wasn't it? You wanted the money from the life insurance payout. You plotted it all with your parents, didn't you? I've never heard of such a load of nonsense in my life. Have you even heard yourself? We'd never do that. How could you even accuse us of this? There are some things you just don't say to people. I'm disgusted with you. You can cut the phony indignation. Trent told me everything. He knew all about your plan. He warned me and told me I should escape as soon as I got discharged. Are you kidding? Trent? Yep. You've been at your parents' place since this morning, right? I used the opportunity to sneak back home while you were away and did some investigating. When I did, I found a strange bottle of medicine I have absolutely no recollection of seeing before. Uh-huh. That's weird. I wonder what it is. I don't know anything about that. We'll find out soon enough. I filed a police report and whatever it is, it's away at the lab for testing. They were filing for the search warrant in the house as I left. They'll probably be turning the place upside down before long. The police are going to search the house? They probably sent some officers over to your mom and dad's place too. Why would they do that? Y you mean you sent the police to interrogate my parents? That's horrible. Me? Horrible? You've got some nerve. You tried to kill me, you psycho bitch. You guys are my family. I was ready to spend my life with you. If this is how you repay me? By trying to murder me for an insurance payout? You're sick. No, I didn't. I wouldn't. You're making some kind of mistake. I don't know anything about that bottle. Please, will you just tell me the truth? I don't know before long anyway. So why not just tell me? I swear, I don't know anything. I'm your wife, Kirk. Won't you believe me? You still love me, don't you? If you do, believe me, please. Hey, sis, it's me, Trent. You... I think it's time to give the pathetic excuse a rest. I'm embarrassed just reading your messages. Trent? Me and Kirk made up after you left the house. We're together now. What the hell do you think you're playing at, boy? I'll have your head for this. Are you trying to turn me and your parents into criminals? I don't need you to turn into criminals. That's what you already are. You're not warming your way out of this one, no matter how much you lie. Kirk found the drug you used. What drug? I don't know anything about a damn drug. I overheard you talking to mom and dad, Phoebe. About your plan to kill your husband for a life insurance payout? Obviously, we told the police. If they ask me to testify against you in court, I'll do it in a heartbeat. You'd betray your family like this? The only traitor here is you. Refusing to stay quiet while you murder your husband does not make me a traitor. You knew how much mom and dad were struggling financially, didn't you? What do you think's going to happen to the pharmacy if they get wrapped up in a police scandal like this? Did you even think before you acted, you mindless idiot? No one will trust them anymore. No one will ever set foot in that pharmacy for as long as they live. It's hardly surprising that people wouldn't trust a pharmacy with a track record of intentionally poisoning people, is it? You only have yourselves to blame. They deserve more than bankruptcy. Keeping silent will make me complicit, and I refuse to have any part in your, in your twisted scheme. You're still part of this family. Do you seriously think it's acceptable to try and send me and your parents to prison? Is that how you repay mom and dad for raising you? Gratitude has nothing to do with it, but now that you mention it, you should know I feel none whatsoever. I know how badly I want to, you know how badly I want to be a doctor, right? Any gratitude I felt towards them for raising me got canceled out the moment they tried to commit such a horrific crime. Don't get me wrong. I can't condone what you guys did on a basic human level. But as someone aspiring to be a doctor, this goes doubly so. I want to protect people's health, not destroy it. I'm done with you all. I'm cutting you out of my life like the tomb as you are. I'll be going it alone from here on out. You heartless prick. Heartless? That's rich coming from someone who tried to murder your own husband. I won't be coming home. In fact, you'll never see me again. Goodbye. Trent, wait. 
and Trent doesn't want anything more to do with you or his parents. I suggest you prepare to pay the consequences for your actions. Shirt, you can't do this to me. I told you I didn't do it. I didn't do what you're accusing me of. Why won't you believe me? I'm your wife. You believe my little brother over me? Your own wife? Trent's a good kid. He isn't the type to tell lies, especially about something this serious. You don't know what he's really like. He's always pulling pranks. This is probably just one of them. Don't fall for it. Trying to murder your husband would be bad enough on its own. But to try and murder your husband with your little bro as his high school finals coming up? You're not just the worst wife ever. You're the worst sister, too. Do you seriously think Trent will risk throwing away his whole future by doing something like this as a prank? I love you. Oh, dear. How do you explain the fact that you quadrupled my life insurance policy behind my back then? Yep, that's right. I know. I saw the emails, found the receipts, and when I called up the insurance company, they said everything had been verified with my documents. Don't you think the timing's all just a little too inconvenient? You tried to kill me. I'm sure of it. What if you're wrong? I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize, beg for forgiveness, and try to make up for the pain I put you through with every fiber of my being. I promise you that. If you genuinely didn't know anything about any of this, you'd happily cooperate with the police as they do their investigation so they can clear your names as soon as possible. Oh, I can't believe you reported me to the damn cops. You have no idea how lucky you are. I wish you died that day. And there it is. I knew it. You did your best to convince me it was just a stomach bug. You really had me fooled. I thought you were just asking all those questions out of kindness because you were worried about me, but it turns out you just wanted progress updates on your murder plot. What use are you to me alive? I only ever married you for your money in the first place. Who the hell would marry a dweeb like you for anything other than money? I really know how you feel about me now. We're getting a divorce. No doubt the cops will be filing criminal charges against you for trying to kill me, but I'm filing civil charges on top of it. I want compensation for what you put me through. I would have used the whole damn bottle if I knew it'd come back to this. I had no idea my brother would stab me in the back. I owe Trent my life. He's an amazing person with a firm sense of right and wrong who doesn't get swayed by the wills and opinions of those around him, family or otherwise. I don't want to see the future he worked so hard for coming to ruin. That's why the sooner the lowlife criminals who call themselves his family are behind bars where they belong, the better. I think we all knew, but it was later confirmed in the police investigation that the drug Phoebe used to try and kill me came from her parents' pharmacy. It was a 100% match with the strange substance I found stashed away at our house. It also just so happens that the side effects of overdosing on that drug are the exact same as the symptoms I was hospitalized with. Between the fact that the premium on my life insurance policy was suddenly quadrupled directly before the incident, Trent's testimony in court, and some other evidence that surfaced during the investigation. Phoebe and her parents didn't have a hope in hell's chance of getting away with it. She was charged with attempted murder, and my in-laws were charged with aiding and abetting. I immediately divorced her and won a huge sum, a huge sum in compensation in civil court. Needless to say, her parents' pharmacy finally went bust. Trent went to live with his grandparents after his disgraced sister and parents got thrown in jail, just like he said he would. He aced his exams. He set to start college this fall. If anyone's got what it takes to become a doctor, it's him. And I just know he'll make a great one. I'm incredibly grateful to Trent, and I feel lucky to be here, happily enjoying newly single life. If not for his courage, I'd be six feet under. Michelle, I just heard about you from your mom. You're going to be able to come today, right? And so what? It's my family's house, so I can go there whenever I please. And I don't need your guys' permission to be able to live there for a while, right? Well, if you're just coming over to say hi for a bit, then I won't say a thing. But for some reason, I think the reason you're coming is to get more money? Your mom's already been through enough at this point. The one that has been going through enough has been me. Ever since you guys started living with my mom, nothing has been a problem for you all. And perhaps that's the reason that I haven't been getting any money from her. Well, maybe it has to do something with the fact that you're old enough now to be supporting yourself. So please... Stop coming over here and try to get some more money out of her. You've already gotten a lot from her, so you should be good now, right? Huh? That has nothing to do with what's happening now, though. I'm getting close to having my debt paid off. And it's because of you two that my mom hasn't come around to giving me any money yet. 
If I'm not able to pay off my debts because you two getting in my way, what am I going to do? You're in debt? Have you been borrowing money or something again? Weren't you able to pay off all of your debts last time with the help of your mom? Well, I happen to take out even more money. You should have known that once you've paid off one debt, you're bound to make another. If I don't borrow money, I'll never be able to afford the things I love. That isn't a good reason to be going that far into debt all the time though. By taking out money all the time like that, you're creating more problems than if you could just live without everything you wanted to have. Are you not worried about how this affects everyone else? You just keep going on and on, don't you? The money that I borrow has nothing to do with you, Jasmine. So stop talking to me like you're my mom or something. Well, if it has nothing to do with me, then it shouldn't with your mom, right? So this time, pay it all yourself. Huh? I'm the daughter of my mom. And when it comes to her daughter getting into debt, that also becomes her debt. Stop acting like it has nothing to do with her, would you? So stupid. I don't think that's how it works, though. Even if you are related to each other as mother and daughter, you are old enough now where your problem should be handled by you. Then why are you both taking care of my mom while she's gotten old? If her problems have nothing to do with others in the family, then she should be able to handle herself, right? Or can't she not do that anymore? What's going on with you and what's going on with her are two different things. And when it comes to the care that your mom is receiving, she is paying for it all by herself. So just like the adult she is, she's making sure to handle her own problems with the tools she has. What the heck? I never knew that she was paying for all of that. Well, if she has that much money to be throwing around, th that means you and my brother are practically living there for free. That's disgusting of you guys. Well, the only money that she's handing out right now is that of which is paying for her to be taken care of. Paying for the house nurse to come check on her and paying for the travel to the hospital when she needs to go. But to make sure that she's financially okay, Toby is in charge of mom's checkbook. When it comes to him and I though, your mom doesn't give us anything. We make sure to pay for the house and everything ourselves. You say that, but I'm sure you're just staying quiet and using her money secretly. You and Toby are some sneaky rats. You say you're living there for mom's sake, but I know you're both just in it for the money. You're very much wrong about that. Now stop trying to make either one of us look bad. Ah, you both have it so easy. By living with her, you can just buy whatever you want without having to worry about money. I want some of that money as well. But I told you it's not like that here. Now would you stop acting like a child? Say whatever you want about yourselves, but I know that you're both lying. Ugh. Well, if it's going to be like that, I wonder if mom could just kick the can sooner rather than later for me. If that were to happen now, I'd be able to get whatever money comes out of her. <laughs> I don't care how vile of a person you are. You cannot say something like that about your own mom. If she heard you say that, she'd be beyond upset with you. Well, it's on her for not giving her cute daughter any more money. <laughs> that must mean she's not fit to be my mother anymore. But if she doesn't want to give me anything, that's fine. But her death will be what she gets for doing this to me. For the time being, will you stop thinking about trying to take her money? Neither Toby or I nor your mom are in the mood to talk about things like that with you. So zip it. Alright, alright, I'll try to do my best to keep quiet. Hey Jasmine. Did you know about that? Know about what? What are you talking about right now? You know exactly what I'm asking about right now. Why am I not going to be getting any of my mom's inheritance? Mm hmm? What the heck are you talking about, Michelle? I'm sorry, but I've heard nothing about your mom's will or anything like that. So what exactly do you mean by saying you're not going to get any of her inheritance? It's in her will. I was just in her room and I just found it. And written in it is her saying that all of her properties will be given to Toby. Hold on just a moment. When you say you were in your mom's room looking around, does that mean right now? I just told you that I found it, so of course I'm in here right now. But right now, Toby, your mom and I are all out of the house and nobody's there, right? So you went in there without asking any of us? And what does it matter that I let myself in? Right now, we need to talk about the will. 
I want to know what the hell is going on here. It does matter that you let yourself in though. No matter whether you think it's okay or not to walk into your parents' house, if they didn't say you could, then that is breaking and entering. Not only that, but you've rummaged through her room. Even if we're your family, there are limits to what you can do around us. Stop being such a little prick. I came to get some money and nobody was here. So I had no other choice at that point. So in other words, you're saying that you came to the house to get more of mom's money? That's not acceptable. But I told you that it doesn't matter now. The problem right now is that I'm not written anywhere in her will. You're with my mom right now, aren't you? Where are all of you? We're at the hospital. Ever since this morning, your mom's health has gone far downhill. We've even tried to give you a few calls, right? You called me? I never remember seeing that. We've called you at least four times, but you never decided to pick up the phone or give us a call back so we all went in without you. Right now, your mom is in really bad shape and we are starting to think that it's her time. Huh? But if that happens, I'll be in trouble. If she's planning on dying, have her take this will and fix it so that my name's in there too. I don't think this is the time to be asking for something like that from her. Right now, she's with Toby getting a few tests run on her. But we are all well aware that things could not end well for your mom. And that's why you need to tell that hag that before things get worse, she needs to fix this will. Where is the hospital you're at? I'm going to come there right away, so tell me. I don't feel like telling you. Huh? You're not even related to us by blood, so what do you think you're doing saying that? This is not the time to be keeping me away from my mom and brother. But if you come here, all you'll care about is the money and that will, right? Even though she's too weak right now to listen to you. If you start talking to her about all of that, she might just die because of you. I don't care about any of that. Now stop pestering me and tell me where that hospital is right now. If you don't let me get there before she passes away, what am I going to do? <sighs> Understood. I'll tell you the location of the hospital, but you'd better come quick. But when you get here, I don't want you saying a word about wanting money and all that crap. <laughs> ah, why are you trying to call me so much right now? Aren't you supposed to be pretty busy? Don't ask me that, like you don't already know why I'm calling now. I might want to ask you where you might have run off to. Right now, we are in the middle of a funeral and you're not here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had some things that I needed to attend to. And you're telling me that there are things you have to do more important than being at your mom's funeral? There should be nothing besides this funeral that you have to attend right now. Well, that depends on the person, right? Also, I never actually thought that my mom would kick the can that early. The fact that she was already dead by the time I got to the hospital was a real letdown. <laughs> I was never able to get her to correct her will for me, so I have some things to take care of right now. <laughs> I remember you talking about that, but at this point, that doesn't need to matter to you. All you need to be thinking about is your mom and her funeral, so hurry up and get back here. All the rest of your family and friends are waiting for you to come back. Nope, I'm not coming back. I have a lot of things to work on now and things like that. What are you even talking about? Hurry up and get back here right now. No, thank you. At first when you called me, I started to panic a bit. But it still seems that even after all this time, you haven't figured out what I'm up to. <laughs> what do you mean I haven't figured out what you're up to yet? What is going on with you? I'm talking about mom's checkbook and bank information, and both of those are in my hands right now. <laughs> huh? Her checkbook and bank information? You're talking about mom's? That's right, mom's. Hey, I told you back then what was written in her will, right? It said that all her properties will go to Toby. I do remember you saying that. But could this mean that by some chance, you're actually planning to pull all her money out by yourself? That's exactly what I'm planning on doing. And actually, I've already pulled all her money out. Everything in her bank account now is mine. <laughs> Thank goodness I was able to get all of this out before her bank account was frozen. What the hell do you think you're doing? 
Do you not even understand what can happen to you for doing something like that? Nothing's going to happen to me, Jasmine. <laughs> this is all happening within the family, so when you try and ask the police for help, they'll just say, we have to deal with it as a family business. And since I knew that she didn't have me in her will, I had to look into all of this more. Even if that could be the case, there is a line between doing good and doing bad, right? No matter how upset you are for not being in her will, what you've done is just a major crime. Yeah, yeah, I get that it's difficult to be on the short end of the stick. <laughs> I understand how it's frustrating it must be to know that you won't be getting any of my mom's inheritance, but it's too late now to do anything. <laughs> Stop acting like a freaking idiot and give us all that money back right now. Right now, we're already having to deal with the loss of your mom at her funeral. Are you not freaking embarrassed by what all you've done while the rest of the family is mourning? I just pulled out all her money so I don't care if what I've done is embarrassing. And also, no matter what you all call me and say to me, it's too late. I'm going to make sure to use up all this money right now. And by the time you'll all find me, it'll once again be too late. You're going to use up all that money soon? How are you going to be able to do that in such a short time? Do you not understand how much debt I have right now? I'll put most of his money into paying all that off, and then the rest will go into buying all the things I've been wanting. And I even am making sure to buy things that I don't want now, but may want down in the future. But most of this, I've already prepared myself for, because I knew this day would be coming. <laughs> so you can all say goodbye to all this money. That's not the problem. I'm saying that what you're doing is very wrong. Even if you can get to the police to come find me, I haven't committed any crimes by doing this. So nothing about what I've done so far is wrong. If you understand me now, you and all the rest of the family can go back watching the funeral and crying. I'll let you know when I've spent everything, okay? Bye-bye now. <laughs> Hello, Jasmine. How are you doing? I just used up all my money, so I'm sure you're not doing too great. <laughs> Michelle, you really had the nerve to never come back to your mom's funeral, huh? I'm sure your mom is really sad now. My mom is dead now. She can't feel sad for anything if she's no longer around you, idiot. You think too much about dead people. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I had a deep relationship with your mom all these years, but she was never really my mom. However, for you, she was the woman that gave birth to you and raised you. Aren't you at least a bit sad that she's no longer around? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm so, so sad. Anyways, I have something else to tell you. I made sure to use every last penny of my mom's inheritance, and there's nothing left now to hand to you and Toby. Bad luck this time. I can't believe it. What the hell did you even think of your mom? Ah, uh, shut the hell up, you dog. What does it matter now? She's already dead and six feet under so we can stop worrying about her. But please tell me, has losing all this money that wasn't meant for you guys made your heart stop? I'm pretty sure you're pretty much dead inside as well now, right? Well, when it comes to her money, I don't care. But just to entertain you, you ended up using it all, huh? You're in for one hell of a time now, Michelle. You poor soul. Huh? Why are you trying to act all tough still? Have you gone off the deep end now that the money's all gone? No, we'll be getting our money. Wait, what are you even saying? Did I not just tell you that it's all used up? Are you actually so shocked by this that you can't even understand my English? Oh, I understood everything you told me, but the amount you ended up spending was the only amount that she had in that one bank account, correct? And that was all the money she had for me, right? There is no more money for her to give anymore. I get that there's her house and stuff left over, but in terms of money, she's all out, right? That money that you spent was the money she had saved for you. Your mom happened to have multiple bank accounts where she had kept money for different purposes. What are you even talking about? In her will, it said everything would go to Toby, right? So there was no reason for her to have money saved up for me. The will you found in her nightstand drawer was an old copy of her will. But when Toby found out that she wanted to give him everything, he turned her down. So your mom ended up making a new will, and then had that one taken away with the lawyer she had. Toby turned that down? 
Is that kid a freaking idiot or something as well? He thought that if he got everything from your guys' mom, then you might try and fight him over it. So Toby thought it would be better to give you some things. Hmm? <laughs> That's not what I expected, but... So you're saying that I didn't have to go through all of this for my part of her money? Well, that doesn't matter now because that money I spent is all gone. During the wedding, everyone was having a laugh about you. They were practically crying because of how amusing it was that you'd steal your own money. And now, because of that, you've brought a lot more trouble on yourself for no reason. Ha! Huh, what? I was going to get that money anyway, so what other trouble could I have made for myself? When it comes to the checkbook and bank information you took, those were supposed to be taken care of by Toby, and you ended up stealing those before the lawyer had legally granted you the money in your mom's account. But this is all has to do with business inside our family, so it doesn't really matter now, right? The police can't do a thing about this, right? Whether or not the police can do anything about you, there is still the court system. And even if you only spent the amount that was supposed to go to you, there is the problem of you stealing something that wasn't yours. And right now, Toby is telling me he'll sue you for that. Uh-huh! Sue me? You have to be kidding me! If you would have just let things be, then none of this would have to happen. I really do feel sorry for you, Michelle. Consider this your apology to your mom, so make sure you pay everything you'll owe to Toby. <laughs> After that, Toby took his sister to court. Then they fought her over for not just stealing the checkbook and bank information of his mom, but also for stealing all the money out of her mom's bank account before it had been legally been given to her. And after listening to the verdict, Michelle was forced to pay Toby a very large settlement that not only included the money for all the trouble she caused, but also having to pay back every penny she took out of the account. Of course, the amount of money she was supposed to receive from her mom was not that much, but when you throw in all the rest of the settlement, she is going to be left with one hell of a headache. And because of that large amount, my sister-in-law is still working on paying it all off. If she would have just behaved herself and let things go as planned, she would have gotten the money she had been so desperate to get. But because of her lack of humanity and greed, she set herself a trap of her own demise. With everything that's happened to her now, you could say she definitely got what she deserved. But as for me, I want to make sure that this was enough to get her to understand that everything she did to her mom was wrong and that she's sorry for all of it. Thank you for watching and listening. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what you thought of the story. We look forward to seeing you at the next story. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.